Hi guys, Squad here, and in this video I'm going to show you in 15 minutes or less how to fly a precision ILS approach in the Cessna 208 Caravan in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now the first thing you're going to need if you want to do an ILS approach is an approach plate. I've got one here, this is Lima Foxtrot Romeo Sierra, the same approach plate that I used in the TBM 930 15 minute video. We're again going to focus on arriving at dog off, which is our initial approach fix. We need to be at dog off at 3,000 feet. We'll then turn on to a course of 028 and we'll try to find the glide slope. We should have the glide slope by 9.2 DME. That's NT. NT is the ILS. And we should also have it by 10.2 NTS, which is the VOR DME located at the back here. We're going to tune both of these frequencies into our system. Decision altitude is 273 feet or 200 feet if you're using the radio altimeter, which is available on the Cessna 208. Now, unlike the TBM 930 video, I'm going to make things a bit more interesting in this one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to approach from the northeast. So, if we have a look at this arrival, this is my entire flight plan. We're coming in from Juliet Romeo, and we're going to go to the Arja VOR. We're then heading to Valax. From Valax, we are then following the Valax 1 Alpha arrival which takes us towards the airfield. This is the airfield here, this is the VOR DME. From here we're going to head on a radial of 233 away from the VOR and we're going to get to our initial fix of dog off by flying 15 nautical miles away from the VOR before turning left to dog off and then we're going to find our localizer. Now there's a couple of ways that you can fly this, the easy way or the hard way. I'm going to show you the hard way. If you have a quick look at the flight plan, you can see I've not punched in any arrival or approach. I've got it flying directly to Valax and then straight to LFRS. It knows nothing about the way I'm going to fly in or the fact that I'm going to land on runway 03. If you press the procedure plate, you could then activate select approach, turn the inner knob and choose ILS 3 Yankee with the outer knob, press enter and then press the button again, scroll down to the transition. Inner button will take you to the option, scroll then to Nedan, enter on Nedan. And if you then press the button once more and scroll down to load, if you are to load this by pressing the enter key, it will then load that entire transition that I just showed you and the arrival, and you can just follow it in. We're not going to do that, we're going to do it the slightly harder way. So, in order to do it the hard way, we're going to basically um, use the VOR DME manually. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the VOR DME into NAV1 and NAV2. That will give us uh, the bearings on both of them. Later on, we're going to switch the NAV1 for the ILS, but leave NAV2 as the VOR DME. So we'll put the VOR DME in, which is 115.5. So we go to the NAV page here. Make sure the selection is on the uh, upper one, and then use the outer knob to change the big number. So I put it on 115 and then use it in and on to change the little number. 115 decimal 55, make it active. Then press the nav button in to switch to the second frequency and put that onto 115 decimal 55. Switch the active, now they're both in there. Press the button again to go back to nav one and this time we're gonna change this one on the standby frequency to the ILS which is 109er decimal niner. So what's gonna happen is we are going to fly towards this VOR DME, which is at the airfield, which is 115.55, and then we're going to follow that outbound course of 233, and we're going to see how far away we get. When we get to 15 DME, we're going to make that left turn, and then we're going to switch this frequency for the ILS frequency, and turn back and try and pick up that localizer on the ILS. So over on the PFD page, we want to be able to see some of this stuff, so leave the CDI as it is. Uh, on the PFD button, on bearing put in NAV1, and on bearing 2, put in NAV2. Now as we get closer, those two should kick in to those frequencies. Once that enunciates uh, NTS here, we should see them here. We also want to choose the DME to be on NAV1 as well, which will give us our distance marker as we're flying away from it. And then it doesn't hurt to click wind and put that on option 3, so we've got the wind bar. Another thing you can do is come down to the timer ref, uh, press this button in here, and scroll down to minimums, and we'll put that onto radio altimeter, use the outer knob to move across, inner knob to change it to 200 feet, 
press enter, get rid of the cursor, click that, and you've now got our radio altimeter of 200 feet. So as we get closer, we're looking for these uh, VORs to trigger, and then that should give us a, uh, a distance marker and a bearing. Now, one thing we need to do is click on the heading bug to put the heading bug at the top, then tell the system to fly on heading. You'll see it just correct very slightly. We'll put it back on nav in a second. Then we can change the course deviation to our VOR1, and we want it to fly, if you remember, we want it to fly an outbound radial of 233. So we need to put that on 233, which we do by changing this course knob here. And we'll put that onto 23. Oops, wrong way. 233. So when we get to the VOR DME, we'll put it into VOR1 mode and it will follow 233 outbound from the VOR DME. So that's what we're going to be looking for. So put this back onto GPS for now and put it back on nav mode and we'll just let the aircraft fly in. You can see already we're not that far away from LFRS. In fact, it tells us here we're 14 nautical miles which means that this nav should have kicked in by now. Okay, my mistake, didn't read the chart properly. You're probably screaming at me with that one. So we'll switch that back out and reduce it back to five and switch it back in. And we'll go to the second one, switch that back out, change it to 0.5, switch it back in. That was my mistake. It was 115.5, not 55. So there you go. NTS is now in. And if we flip back over here, you should see... We are 12.1 nautical miles away from NTS, which is over the airfield. And then once that gets down to near zero, we're going to change this to follow NAV1, which will follow the outbound track that we're looking for. We'll also at that point descend down to 3,000 feet because we need to be at 3,000 feet for uh, the uh, glide slope, uh, sorry, the initial approach fix at Dogoff. Okay, we're just approaching uh, NTS now, so I'm going to change our altitude to 3,000 feet. We'll descend at about uh, 800 feet per minute. That should be more than enough. And as this now gets down to zero, I will then change this to uh, NAV1, which will follow outbound track. You can see the blue line here is already there. We'll follow an outbound track of 233, I think we selected. And we'll do it now. So what's going to happen is the VOR has been lost because we flew overhead and then it should pick it back up in a second. There it goes. So we'll pull it on nav mode. And it will now fly the outbound VOR radial 233. It's just going to have to capture that because I uh, moved it over a little bit late, but it's fine. Now we're looking at the DME, and we need to start descending, so V-speed. Bring that down to 800, and just throttle back slightly so we don't uh, overspeed. So what we're looking for is about 15 DME, which is roughly the distance dog off is away as well from the airfield. And then we'll adjust our heading bug here so that we are turning about 90 degrees to the left. So we're flying outbound. And then we'll turn 90 degrees to the left, turn around and recapture the, the, the localizer. Uh, what we'll then do is we'll flick this to 109 decimal niner, and that'll change to uh, the ILS frequency, and that'll be the localizer we're looking for. Okay, we have just hit 15 DME, so we're going to go to heading mode now, which is going to cause it to make that left turn. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring in the ILS frequency 109 decimal niner, so we'll flick that into the active. That should change to NT, which is the ILS, so we've identified the ILS. And instead of saying VOR, it now says lock one. So what we're looking to do now is intercept this localizer, which we should do in just a few short miles. So we want to fly directly at the localizer. So we want it to be horizontal here, so we're flying at 90 degrees towards it, and then we want to turn uh, within 30 degrees of it so that we can intercept it properly. What I'm going to do now is just back off on the throttle and bring us down to uh, flap speed because we want to be in engaging flaps one when we uh, turn in our initial approach fix. So we don't want to turn too early because we're uh, we, if we do that we'll shorten our um, uh, 
section from Dog Off to the final approach fix and we'll begin our descent. So we're just going to head towards it until the needle becomes active and then we'll turn left and intercept it and then put it onto nav mode. So as we get down into flap speed, I will deploy the first stage of flaps and then we'll just need to put the throttle back in just to make sure that we keep our speed up. And we'll just wait for the needle to come down. Okay, needle's coming in, so we'll turn left. And we'll engage nav mode. And now you can see it says lock, autopilot 3,000 feet. So it will establish us on the localizer in a second. The course 028, it's picked manually because it knows it's a localizer. If it didn't say 028, you would of course have to turn the course knob and make sure it said 028 because that's the radial that you want to fly in on. And now it's established on the localizer, we en engage approach mode, which will cause it to look for the glide slope. Now according to the chart, at 9.2 DME from NT, is where the final approach fix is and from 10.2 NTS which is what this one's pointing at so there's two different measurements we have here NT and NTS but either way when we get to uh, that we should start to see the glide slope captured and coming down okay so the ball is coming down when it's on this first pip here this is where you want to get yourself into a full flap configuration and you want to have your descent speed sorted out which is around about 80 to 85 knots for the caravan depending on various factors but either way you want to be fully configured now and have a consistent speed as we begin the glide down 9.2 so it should start to uh, descend shortly and there it goes So this is why you need to adjust your throttle and just make sure you keep the speed exactly where you want it. 85 knots, looks good, just back off on the throttle, there we go. So now we're on a fully configured stabilised approach. Now if you look out the window, we do not see the airfield. And we can go all the way down to our minimums, which is 200 feet, because this is a precision approach. And at this point, it's reminding you to set your missed approach altitude, which was 4,000 feet. And we'll also synchronise the heading bug, because the heading bug uh, the missed approach tells us to climb straight out 1600 and then turn left to 4000. And that's it. We just need to sit here now and wait until we see the runway or go missed. So 800 feet, I can confirm we have the approach lights and the runway lights in sight. So at this point you can fly all the way down to minimums or cancel the autopilot and land yourself. Okay, autopilot disengaged. And that is how you fly a precision ILS approach in the Cessna 2 Caravan in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to share it with people and subscribe if you want more content. Take care guys, happy flying.